Survivor is big uh, with twists and uh, uh, changes that kind of keep the game interesting and exciting. And so uh, to pitch a whole new twist, I would love more. Oh, yeah, this is what I'd love. I would love uh, uh, more that head to head combat type stuff. And, and I mean, we, we do already. We have that, but a little more winner take all. So Brad from tribe Tibuana is going against Big John from the other tribe and the winner takes all man. It is just, it's all on you that if you win it, your tribe doesn't have to go to tribal council. If you lose it, you go. So a little bit more of that revved up head to head competition that uh, winner take all. Oh, I'd love that. High tokens went really good last season, actually. So I'm really anticipating that they will bring back that fire tokens. It's like to have some kind of cash in your, or like a coins or cash in your pocket. So you can use it. You don't know the value. You can buy stuff in the island, whatever, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or even you can uh, 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 convince people and uh, tell them, hey, this fire token is better than the uh, immunity idol. This can be played even after, you know? So it's give you the opportunity to think out of the box. Like watching Winners at War, I feel like there's still a lot that needs to be worked out in terms of the fire tokens. Like I feel like it gives a lot of power to people who are outside of the game to manipulate what happens while the game is still happening. So I wonder, like, I feel like there could be something cool around like currency, um, and affecting perhaps like the other tribe. So like, even though you might not know the people on the other tribe, like how can you use um, the skills that you have in just reading people and then getting some type of reward or something that you can use to try to influence the other tribe and build relationships with them without having, without have uh, like figuring out how you're able to like influence what happens in the other tribe, like possibly put people at a disadvantage or possibly build relationships with people without even having met them yet. I feel like if we're going survivor currency, which I kind of feel like is what's going to happen, um, it would be it would be fun to be able to influence the game from different ways with people who are still in the game. A new twist that I think would be fun on survivor is having the entire cast be the jury. So you have a vote for everyone that has been voted out. So it's 100% fair for the entire show. Team cooperation. We're gonna work together as a team, as a unit, to be able to go through each different stage of Survivor. Before we get to the merge, before we do the voting, we're gonna get a team of folks to stay together and ride this ship to the end. If some new players can partner up with like a past favorite Survivor, like if it's like me and Aubrey, like against like two other um, like a, a contestant or a fan favorite, um, and kind of like uh, blood versus water when you had two people on the same team, but it was like somebody in your family. This would be like survivor and uh, fan, uh, survivor contestant and fan favorite, like on one team together, and then see how far the two of them can go. And then uh, maybe win as a team instead of an individual survivor, like Team Genie and Aubrey win $2 million, you know, something like that. Survivor brain brawn beauty with captains. So you could have somebody beautiful as the captain of the beauty tribe. So like a returning player, like Lauren O'Connell, who's my survivor crush, what's up? Um, and then like somebody really brawny, like, I don't know, Brad Culpepper as a captain for brawn. And then brains, you could have like Dominic Abate, somebody really smart or Adam Klein or something like that. I don't know. I think that's good. I know they've brought in the idea, or I guess they have used it of a super idol one that could be read after the votes, but it was just too easy to find the idol and then have that kind of power. So what I think would be a great twist is having some sort of similar to a legacy advantage where it has a menu though of two different ways that you can use it and tied with an idol that you have to find yourself, then having the same powers as a super idol that you can use after the votes, but you have to have both. The legacy advantage that you find on day one during the marooning and an idol that's found at your camp. A super 
idol nullifier. So there's the idol nullifier that you can play against someone who plays an idol, but then there's super idols that you can play after the votes are read, which is just like, that's that's ultimate, right? Like you don't have to, you know, you don't have to hide anything. I mean, you, you've got the power to like basically the veto to basically say like, even if you guys voted me, try to vote me off, like I'm, I'm like, I'm turning this back around with my super idol, right? But then to be able to nullify the super idol, I think that would be really, really, really interesting to to see. That's an interesting twist. I really like um, this happened in the previous season, but I really like um, like the advantage of an idol nullifier or um, uh, a, an immunity idol with special powers that can be played after the vote. Um, I think those types of twists and just allow for like the craziest thing to happen and the unexpected to happen. And I think especially after a year like 2020, like you always have to be, you know, on your toes and expecting change and uncertainty and things like that. So I think that will like really shake up the game if we're able to have those special advantages. On a three tribe season, two of the tribes have to go to tribal. It's usually two tribes win immunity and then one tribe is safe. I mean, two tribes win immunity and one tribe has to go to tribal council. But I think that a lot of people are able to skate by in the beginning because they don't have to go to tribal and you know really everything is wet concrete until you go to tribal it's all fluid but then it, it's got to stick at some point so all, more tribals i guess <laughs> a new twist or theme that i think i'd really like to see is if they did a season of people who got voted out first i think that a lot of the times the first vote out can be kind of arbitrary because people have this attitude of like anyone but me and oftentimes we lose players so early on that I think could make a difference later on in the game. Um, so I definitely think doing a season of first vote outs would be really interesting and something new. You start initially the first few votes as an individual game, and then you move to a tribe game and then back to an individual game. That would throw everything on its head because being an individual game in the start would mean that you would have to be physical. You would have to work on providing for yourself and play that individual mindset and it would ex expose a lot of your strategy early on that you wouldn't be able to hide when you'd be shuffled back into a tribe. Instead of blood versus water where you bring your loved one, what if it was like you and your boss and they're on opposite tribes and there's this like crazy dynamic where people, you know, some people love their boss and want to work with them and some people hate their boss and are trying to get them out. And I'm instantly seeing a million problems with this um, formula, but I think something like that where you're bringing people that have kind of more complicated uh, relationships could be really fun. For me, the themes I like the best are ones that kind of influence who the people are in the game or, you know, or their designations, you know, like brain, beauty, bronze, something like that. I love, I like those kinds of, those thematic changes better than the changes to the structure of the game. But also, you know, every change makes a new, interesting, unique season. For me, I'm horrible with numbers. So I'm just not good at math. However, I have mastered Sudoku during quarantine here. And, um, but I'm not good with like numbers, right? So I was thinking, how could I make this easier on myself? And I, th I thought to myself, what if Survivor did like teams of two and then getting to the final four just by using teams of two tribes, like two double tribe. And uh, I think that would be really difficult because you would have to really trust your one person. And instead, you know, when they go to three tribes, it's always so difficult because the numbers are smaller and your chances are less. But like six tribes, you know, eight, nine tribes of two, like, and then eventually swapping into larger tribes. I wonder how that would work, you know, going from a very small to a larger tribe. So I would wonder how that would go. You know what would be fun? Um, bring back the auction. And besides the food items, like just go ahead and just say that there, there's not a, a hidden clue in there or anything like that, just to get that off the table. And have family visit, like something that if you open it up, it's like, you know, here's your dad or here's, you know, add something like that into it. Something that is very meaningful to that person. I think that would, that would be, that would be very cool. For a twist on a new twist on Survivor, I would love to see like where you're tethered to one other player in the game and your job is to basically make sure that that player makes a certain stage in the game. I think it would just add a certain level of dynamics to the game. Like imagine I come into the game and I hate player X, right? But then Jeff announces, 
you have to in secret obviously you have to keep player x safe until the merge and if you don't then there's some kind of penalty or something like that i think that that would add a uh, a crazy layer to the game i think that it would make it a lot more interesting i think something for theme would be cool like american geography like i've known they've done um like david and goliath things like that kind of and that obviously speaks a little bit to privilege but like i said i've traveled to 49 countries and I've been more culture shocked in a lot of places in the United States than I've been anywhere in the world. So if they did like a Northeast, West, and then like a South, that would be really interesting to see how the different cultures clash and get along.